So Microsoft put out a refresh for all of its apps on the iPad. So we have a new look to the apps. We have a little bit of reorganization. Looks like we've got some new templates and they've added some liquid glass appeal to match the new iPad operating system. And these updates are great, but honestly, I was hoping for a little bit more because there's so much missing from the Microsoft apps on the iPad in the first place. They're super powerful and I use them every day, but man, there were just some things on my wish list that I did not get. Hey everyone, Tech Dad here and I use the Microsoft suite every day for my day job so I am a project manager and we are a Microsoft shop and so I have to use all the things from Outlook to Teams obviously I use Word Excel PowerPoint and I even get into other apps like Microsoft Planner for project management and so I do all kinds of things in these apps I create scopes of work in Microsoft Word I manage budgets in Microsoft Excel I create training slide decks in Microsoft PowerPoint I mean Microsoft is critical for all the work that I do and I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that use all these Microsoft Microsoft apps all the time. And I use all these apps on my iPad. So my iPad is my primary device. And so my iPad is my main computer. That's what I'm chugging all my work out on from nine to five. And so I like to grab my iPad, turn on my work focus, everything goes away and bam, there's my Microsoft apps and my widgets to keep me informed on my most recent documents. And so in this video, I wanna talk about what Microsoft has done to improve their apps, just make them look a little cleaner, nicer and more modern. And then I wanna hit on what's really missing from these apps that I'd like to see on the iPad. They're already pretty darn good, but there's definitely some things that are missing that we got to talk about. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first let's talk about what's new. And the first thing we have to point out is the new app icon refresh. So all of the app icons got a brand new look to them. They're supposed to be less rigid and give more of a free flowing form. In addition, it looks like that Microsoft updated the home screens for Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So now you have a little create tab and you can see all of the templates that are available. Available, and it looks like they've cleaned these templates up and maybe even added some new ones for this little update. I've always thought the Microsoft templates are pretty good and they keep getting better and better over the years. So scroll through those templates if you get a chance. Now let's talk about the menu bar for a second. And this is one thing that I think is totally being overlooked by Microsoft. So iPadOS 26 added a new menu bar to the operating system. And that's really powerful, or at least it could be if Microsoft would update those menu bars. And iPadOS 26 26 has been out for a few months now and nothing. These menu bars are pretty much the same that they were in the beta. There's nothing there. The only choices you have are what Apple has added in as the base. It's clear and obvious that Microsoft has not added anything to these menu bars. And that would make it so much more powerful using these apps if they did. So on the Mac versions, these menu bars are super fleshed out. And they have been for years. And it's just really easy to grab all the different kinds of controls and options you want from those menu bars on the Mac. So so I'm wondering why they aren't doing this on the iPad. You think they would have jumped on that opportunity when iPad OS 26 launched. So that's something I want to see improved over these next few months. Hint, hint, Microsoft. All right, let's talk about Teams for a second. So Microsoft Teams is absolutely critical for my work. And in today's remote culture, we all use Microsoft Teams all the time. So it's very important that it work well. And it works pretty good on the iPad. And there are some new improvements. For example, I love this new feature that you can press and hold on the camera icon and select the camera that you want to use. That is awesome. So I often connect my iPad to my Apple Studio display and I wanna be able to pick the camera of the Studio display because it just looks better and looks correct depending on the angle I'm sitting at my desk. Well, now you can do that. They've added this feature where you can press and hold that camera button and actually change your camera input. So if you have a secondary camera hooked to your iPad, you can choose it now. And a lot of people had external webcams connected to their iPads, but you could never select them before, so you couldn't use them. In in addition to that, iPadOS 26 allows you to change your microphone input. And so you can swipe down from the control center and see your team's controls. You can press on that at the top and then you can select the input that you want. So I can choose my iPad microphone or I can choose my studio display microphone or any other microphone that I connect. So if I connect this Yeti Nano, I can select that as an input as well. So there's just a lot more ease in changing the inputs of your audio and video. I love it. There are still some shortcomings to Microsoft Teams and I don't know that that's all Microsoft's fault. For example, you can't share your secondary display screen. That's always annoying, and it's been that way since I started using the iPad, and I think that's something that Apple needs to fix, not Microsoft. Okay, let's talk about Microsoft Planner for a minute. So this app did not get an update at all, and I can tell that Microsoft is going a different direction with Planner, so they want to keep it around, but they've actually built it into Teams, and so you have the mobile app of Microsoft Planner, and it has not changed, and it's really, really basic. 
basic. And I don't really like the Teams version on the iPad because it's not very touch friendly. You definitely have to have a trackpad and keyboard connected. Otherwise, you're just not gonna get the functionality like you do on the mobile app. So on the mobile app version, you can move things around. You can use the touch controls to move around your cards. And so I wish that they would actually update the Planner app and maybe they will soon, I don't know. But as for right now, Planner got nothing. You gotta use Teams to really make use of it. Maybe that's their direction, we'll see. And other than that, that's about all we got. Now there are supposed to be some bug fixes because man, there are definitely some bugs. So I use the new M5 iPad Pro. And I gotta say, Microsoft Word is super buggy. I can't even highlight text with the cursor. I have to use the touch controls to highlight text and that's super annoying. We have trackpad support. We should be able to highlight text and everything should just work okay. But I think this is a bug. I think they're probably gonna come out with more fixes so that works a lot smoother. These apps still aren't desktop level. Obviously, there are still a few things missing. For the most part though, they're pretty good for mobile apps. All right, that's my rundown on Microsoft Office and the new refresh that it has gotten in the last couple months on the iPad. Again, I use it all the time. It's super important to me and so I hope they keep making updates to this software. Let me know if you have any questions about Microsoft Office on the iPad. I'm happy to help you out. That's all I got for you. If you like this sort of content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.